Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. So I'm going to walk you through these symbols of the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, and clarify the relationship between these symbols and the sounds they represent. How do we make sense of the relationship between these written symbols and the sounds they stand for, which is actually all the sounds of all human languages? So I'm going to walk you through these the consonant chart, the vowel chart, and then tell you how they relate to actual speech sounds, actual sounds in human languages, and also help you find out how you can actually type these symbols in your computer. I will definitely introduce some resources, online resources. Hopefully at the end, you will be able to write these symbols on your computer and you will be able to pronounce if not all of them at least some of them but you will have um, the resources to set you up to get started on mastering all these sounds so this chart is a pdf file that you can easily find on on the internet ipa chart this is just a one page PDF file which is released by the International Phonetic Association. So, even the abbreviation for the name is IPA, <laughs> but IPA also means International Phonetic Alphabet. So, this organization has prepared this one page chart, but this is just a PDF file, so it's like text. It's a bunch of characters and which are presented with some brief descriptions and symbols. So, of course, this is text-based. So you look at these symbols, you need to know what, what these symbols are. These symbols represent sounds. So this is key. They represent sounds. They are not sounds. So basically, this is just a symbol that is representing a sound. So the question is, what is that sound? In order to find out, you can just uh, search interactive IPA chart. You see the chart here? So if you go to consonants, you press this. This is the York University website. Pa, a pa, a, 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 ba, a, a. First, it gives you the sound followed by a vowel, which is a typical vowel, a. Ah. Then it's both preceded as well as followed by the vowel. Then it's preceded by the vowel followed by nothing. This is probably, if not the easiest, one of the easiest sounds which you can produce by just opening your mouth. Ah, like, and you look, this is, this is the shape of your tongue and in a way the shape of your mouth so the ah sound is produced when you have opened your mouth the most you need an environment for the sound so when you say ah you produce ah b has a minimal environment it's followed by another sound and that sound is a vowel so it gives some shape it gives some context to b this is syllable initial this is syllable medial this is syllable final and these are the three classic basic environments that affect the quality of a sound and that's why the an interactive table gives you that so if you say this ta, uh, ta, aunt, aunt, ga, uh, ga. Ag, ag. I can say ag, 
right? Ag, you vis, you clearly hear the sound g at the end, but I can, I can say it in a way that I don't release the final consonant. Ag, ag, like bag. It's a good bag. I can say it's a good bag. I can say it's a good bag. And this is very common in English. Most of the symbols here are as we expect them, right? But then there's other symbols which we may be familiar with in terms of auditory familiarity in the sense that we have heard those sounds, but the way they are represented here is not familiar. So the sound is familiar, but the visual representation, the symbol is not familiar. Let me give you an example, this one. So you don't know, you wouldn't know what sound this is, but if I play it for you, you would know. Let's try. Sha, a sha. This is just giving you the two environments, syllable initial and syllable medial. Okay, it's not giving you the syllable final um, or syllable final unreleased. A lot of these symbols are familiar, like many of these symbols are familiar. Some of them are not. The symbol is not familiar, but the sound is familiar. So this one, for example. Ja, a ja, a ja. So this is a sound ja, which is common in English, like television, visual, there's no separate symbol for it in English, but the sound itself exists. Or this sound. The, a, the, a, the, a, the, a. This is like the first sound in the word think. That's the theta. You might say, okay, this is a sound for sh. Then how do I write that sound? Okay, that's a good question, right? So either you have a keyboard called Enki, you can install this, or you can go online and just say type in IPA and then open a bunch of uh, pages like this one. So if you want to type the regular symbols, then you can use your keyboard. But if there's a symbol like sh that you don't have on your keyboard, you can just manually click it here. So you get the sound sh, or you get the sound j, or you get the sound th, or the, or a, or a as in father, or a as in about. Even there's key like shortcut keys. If you, when you hover your mouse pointer, when you hold it without clicking, it gives you the shortcut key. Alt A. This one is Alt T. These are easy to guess. This must be Alt T, yes. Like you keep the Alt with a similar, with a near sound, which is like close to it. This must be V. Alt V, yes, because it's upside down V, but it's not a consonant. It's, a, it's easy like to, it's kind of easy. You get used to it. Or if you go to the, the last option, this one here. This is also interesting in a different sense, like because when you do this, it keeps the symbols here. So next time you can just click here. So if you sound, there are certain symbols which are more common, you can just use this. Like thin, for example, the word thin, I want to transcribe it. So I open this, this symbolizes that we are using IPA transcription. This is th and the vowel e, like th. And then the symbol na is already on my keyboard, thin. Suppose you want to do, you're doing self-teaching, like so you have a small laptop and you have Wi-Fi or internet connection and you want to learn phonetics on your own. So hopefully our course will help those people. So you would, you would ask, um, for example, you hear the sound sh ship, then um, you would say, okay, how do I write ship in the IPA? So you have to use these two different pages, this one and this one. So this is for hearing, 
This is for typing. You could just have a paper dictionary of English. So you word, you write the word ship, right? So it gives you the pronunciation here. Look, then you can play on, play it. Ship. Then you can, that's sh, and then you already saw it. So sh, a, oh. and p, which is on your keyboard. Ship. And then you can also learn the sounds. E. E, you see? And then p. Pa. Papa. Ship. How do you know what the sounds are? You need a couple of tools. You need, of course, a paper or like a dictionary which is installed on your computer like this one. So you already know the sound, but you don't know how what the symbol is in the IPA, like sh. So sha, a sha. Uh, or this one. Tha, a tha. So this is th, but in English, this is also th. Tha, a tha. For example, this is thin, this is that. Both are th, but one of them is voiced, which is why it's to the left, to the right, that. The other, the other one is voiceless. So then there's a third group of sounds which you don't know. How, like you, the, the symbol is totally unfamiliar. But this one is like, Unfamiliar, it's an upside down ra because it's the English ra. Ra, a ra. You see? So again, if you speak English, you would know this sound. But if you speak English, probably you wouldn't, you don't have, you don't know this sound. Look. Ha, a ha. So this is a sound that you don't know how to write in English because it, the sound doesn't exist. And also the sound itself doesn't exist. So, unless you speak German or Spanish, so you need to get used to both the shape of it, the written form of it, and the sound of it. So you need to learn to uh, produce it. And also when you hear it, to be able to distinguish it. If there is a foreign noun name, like for example, an Arabic word which has this kh sound, Usually when it's written in English, they pronounce it K. This Arabic word, the KH, represents this sound. So people say K. They say Kader. So I don't want to discuss this part. They just say Der in English. But even this one, they don't say Kader. They say Kader. But then, interestingly, in the, like if it's a Spanish word, if it's like this one, instead of saying Jose, so here, instead of going up, they go this way. They pronounce Jose, he. See, so they, they change the place of articulation, but for Arabic words, for some reason, they change the manner of articulation. And then the fourth set of sounds it sounds that neither the sound nor the symbol is familiar, like this. So and this is all assuming that you only speak English. Also, another thing which is similar to X, which is this is not called X in IPA. They also have different names. This one, which is in English, is called J, but in uh, IPA is called Yad. It's it sounds like Y. Yeah in regular English spelling is represented by ya, yeah, usually by Y. For example, yard, if you want to do it in IPA, box in IPA. So you see the regular X, it's, um, it depends on how it sounds, whatever it sounds, it sounds x, x box. And then if it's a foreign noun, Jose, of course, this is how you would write it if you already speak Spanish. So as for example, if you're a Mexican in Mexico and you want to say, how do you transcribe this? You would transcribe this. But then if you're an English speaking person, so Jose, the way you would pronounce it as an English speaker, you would change this to her and then you would make it a diphthong and then you would, the final vowel, you would also make it a diphthong. Jose.
So you had a set of symbols which sound the way you would expect them. Then you have uh, symbols which you know the sounds, but the symbols are different. Then you, there are symbols that you think you know how they sound, but they actually sound differently like this one and this. And then you have sounds, so, and this is all assuming you're a native speaker of English and if you don't speak any other language. And there are symbols which neither look familiar nor sound familiar because you don't have the sound in the language in English. So in order to learn those, for example, if you want to learn this, then if you learn German, then you will learn this sound, like in, in the word ich, which means I, ich. Or if you want to learn this sound, this one, then you want to learn Iranian Persian. So for example, okay, this word is pronounced baq, baq, and uh, it means garden. And the sound is a voiced uvular plosive. I just wanted to like give you some perspective and make sense of this table of consonants and how you can transcribe those. You might wonder, okay, if I'm curious about this sound, how would I know what language it exists in? Maybe you can find a resource in which it gives examples of each of these symbols and it tells you what languages it has. If you want to know what sounds English has, right? What are the, which of those symbols? You can just say English phonology. So Wikipedia is always a good source. So you can open this page and then you can come here and then when you scroll down a bit, it says the phonemes, you know, or sometimes it just tells you phonology. You just click on it, then it gives you a table with the IPA. So you would immediately see what phonemes, what consonants, and what vowels. If you go down a bit, these are the vowels that exist in English. Received pronunciation is British English General American. In general Australian these are they use like as you see they have different sets of vowels Omniglot is just a website if you go there um, you will easily and immediately see a list of the phonemes of the language modern English alphabet it gives you the alphabet it gives you the symbols you see the ones in square brackets they are IBA IPA the names of this is like this the name of this is a and then it gives you examples american english australian english british english canadian english the examples of sounds then um, it gives you the examples of how what the consonants are like b is pronounced this like this example this is the aspirated version like and then more examples you see and then a recording it gives you a sample and then it gives you a sample text at the end usually it's part of the universal declaration of human rights uh, usually you see this in different languages all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights they are endowed with reason so the article one of the universal declaration then this is in british english this is american english it's, uh, it's fun to try to learn all these sounds because these are all the sounds of all human languages. These are all the consonants in all human languages. These are all the vowels in all human languages. Thanks for your time and attention and see you again soon.